This is code.org. Let's see what we're working on. Do this. Make this Magic 8-Ball app work. When the screen is clicked, make a random string, which is like a word or letters, from the answer list display on the 8-Ball. Oh, here's the... Okay, so here's our list, right? And the random strings. This is a string. This is a string. When it's letters or words and in quotes, it's a string. Use the random list access pattern ooh, to update the code. All right. So let's go through this. Answer. Use the random list access pattern. All right. So to do that, what we're going to need to do well is use random. So update the index to a random number. So on click, we need to update the index. Update screen is ran down here. What's it do? Answer. Okay, so the, we're, they already have this variable called index way up here, and it's set to zero. So when they say up the, update the index to a random number, we need to reassign it, right? So we already have var index, which is great. So we don't need a var. We just need a index equals random number. Now, how do we do a random number? Well, I'm going to head over to math here, and yep, they've already prepared it for me. Now, what numbers do I want this to be? Well, I need it to access anything in the list, right? I need it to access all the things. And what's critical, indexes start at zero, right? Yes, absolutely, is zero. The spot is zero. This is zero, this index is one, this index is two, index of three, index of four, so on and so forth. If you start counting at zero, that means we need to be able to get a random number of zero so they can occasionally get yes, absolutely. And let me go into text so we can see it all. We also want to keep going. Wow, where does this end? They made it super long, <laughs> which is fine because I actually don't care how long it is. I don't need that. I'm going to be lazy and you should be too. So now what random number do I want to end at? I could count all that up, but eh. What I'm going to do instead is say answers dot, nope, I'm lying. Oh, no, wait. Yes, answers dot. And you can also find this if you're worried about how I'm typing it out here. In, uh, yep, in variables. Here, I'll use this. Boom. And you can just drop it in. And then answers dot length, except that's not enough. I need to add, and I should have done so earlier, answers dot length minus one. The minus one is super important because in code and JavaScript and every programming language that I can think of, when you ask for the length of a list or of an array, when you ask for that length, it starts counting at one, right? So you have just two things in a list, tiny list, okay? When you ask, if you ask someone, hey, how many things are in the list? And they, they're going to look at it and be like one, two, there's two things. So even though we index at zero, even though it is zero and one, right? Those two things, if they were a code, the index for them, the first one is zero, the second thing is one. That seems strange. There's still two things in that list. However, if I want to get the end of a list, right? I'm like, I need to use the index to get the end of the list. Well, let's get answers.length. That's going to return a number that is just the normal count of the list. So I need to subtract one because indexes will always be one beneath the length or the count of the list. So minus one is the end of the list. And that's just because we start at zero. So we have to shift everything down one and that will give us the last index. So now we can get an index zero to the end of the list. All right. Now what? Do they do the rest? Let's try. Yes, absolutely. Click. Maybe. I have a good feeling about this. Thank you. You are crazy. <gasps> Insulting. <laughs> awesome. This is tricky stuff and it's going to stay tricky, but we'll get the hang of it. Let's keep going. 